This plate is eight inches by about three and a half, 23 and a half almost. But I kind of screwed up. I have welding beads here that spilled off when it was getting cut and so forth. It's always a good idea to clean your material so it's flush to the plate before you get started. Okay, here we go. Okay, it took seven minutes to cut four and a half inches of one half inch plate. I slowed the blade down a little bit um, because I think the teeth dig in just a little bit more. Just flip this piece of metal around so that I can cut the other half here. This edge of my plate is square perfectly square to the blade so 
with a little bit of luck, I can square the plate off to the table, bump this up against the blade, and you'll see that pretty much have it on the mark there. It should be pretty much on the money because I've cut a lot of stuff with this thing and been able to machine it really easily. So we'll get started with the second cut. Lots of oil. What the heck? Here we go. It's, it's a little off, but you know I know I can do better than that if I aligned it a little, took more time to align it. But from for, for what I'm using this for, that's not a problem. That took about four and a half minutes, something like this that. Is a better um, view of the cut that I made. It's probably a little less than a thirty second of an inch off, but as you can see. It's a pretty clean cut all around. Kind of a breakdown of this machine here. I um, I've made a few additions to this thing besides just this table here. Um, so as you saw, you have a rolling table on bearings. Let me hook this back up here. Get out of the way. Here's a stop. We usually have a. I usually have this right there. I can adjust it, and uh, as soon as it finishes the cut to the very end, I have a stop right there. I could make it so the motor kept stopped off when it hits there, but I'm not, I need to be at the machine at, at all times, so I'm not doing that. Okay, this table comes off. See the bottom? It's got rollers on there. These have a slight, slight adjustment too. You can, you can make. When I'm working, and I've got this in play, if I have some quick, other quick cuts to do, I can just roll this off the edge here, and it hangs. So I can use my regular table here, which is filthy now. Let me wipe it off. This is my regular table here for rough cuts. Um, it works great. You can see a bracket here. I have an attachment. Basically, it's a it's a slide that you can clamp stuff down to and make again. You can make things micro square. I mean, with this slide here, you can get cuts exactly the way you want them. Uh, very nice addition. I'll show you that later. This usually stays on the machine. This rides over the top. So this cures. There's no adjustments on this here. It's just it's on there. This table here has lots of adjustments. First off, to get it square to the blade, this whole box just rests on top of this frame that the saw sits on. Here, I have adjustable brackets, and this is the retaining screw for the whole bed. Once I align the table square, or just about square, I'll go ahead and adjust these here tighten them down. That way I can remove the screw, pull the table off if I ever have to, put it back on, line them up with these tabs, tighten it down, it'll go right back into center. Um, these, really important to have them square to each other. So I'll put a piece of board in between with a specific measurement here, I clamp these together, and then screw them down. Here, I've got two nuts, so I can adjust the height back and forth like that. This is drilled extra wide so I can adjust these back and forth. That's my micro adjustment once I've adjusted the table to the top and the blade. Again, everything is designed to measure against the blade. 
Um, so yeah, again, it takes a long time to adjust these here. You have to basically, you know, roll them back and forth until they both are pretty much sisters. They're duplicate to each other. And then uh, if you get that right, you can go back and readjust the table here. But generally speaking, I start from the table and work on these here. Um, I'll put the table on, run a couple of cuts so it's skewed like this. Then, again, I'll go back to adjust it square with this here. My main goal is to adjust this blade to make this square. So this corner here has to be square to this blade. I don't use the other corners because they're a little bit off. I don't carry the machine them because I don't have the tools to do that. But uh, yeah, I can gauge everything off this corner. I I've made a lot of other stuff. I've made some special clamps for this here, which perhaps I'll show you The last later. thing that I put on here was um, this catch-all. Basically, it catches all the metal after I've worked on stuff. I'll um, show you the slides, very simple slides. Basically, they're nylon screws. Um, the whole frame had to be adjusted really well for these to work right. I guess you could adjust those screws by putting spacers and stuff in them, but uh, anyways, I got it right. So that's just an addition there. And as you can see, it catches the stuff. These are some of the tools that go with the machine. I have a plate on the bottom that uh, I adjust these screws to, to make it so it doesn't have any wobble in it. And uh, it slides on this here, like that. Since this is cold rolled steel and it's got scale on it and such, um, you can't, there's only so much smoothness you can get out of these. Um, had I spent a bunch of dollars on some nice finished metal, this would be really smooth. But such is the case. Here, I've got a lock, lock screw. It holds this in place. That comes in play when I either attach this outfit here, which goes right there clamps on like that so if I want to put uh, slotted slotted uh, parts onto a, a screw or I make something special I can adjust how deep I want to cut which, which comes in very handy clamps to the 45 here by screwing it here and then I lock it all down so it doesn't go anywhere There's another tool here. You can see how it's cut really close to the threads there. It doesn't retain a lot of pressure, but I can take, see if we can find a screw or bolt. Let's say I have bolts to cut and I want them nice and square. And let's say I have a bunch of them to cut at a certain length. I have a stop clamp that sits right here. Basically, this will feed in, be stopped by that clamp, and then I'll slide it forward into the cut. But this here, 
allows me to pull the screws nice and square. I bump it against the stop. However length I need these pieces, I can cut a hundred of these the same exact length, which I've done. And then I roll it through the cut. I don't need this real tight, just a finger tight or just with a screwdriver, but, but not real tight. And um, I've designed it so that it can sit really close to the edge. I have the capacity to cut screws up to about half an inch long. Anyways, very nice for repetitive work. need to take this off it's latched on here with a u channel and a post on both sides this here is screwed to the actual saw i can still use the handle and such on the bottom i have i don't know if you can see it now because it's getting dark but this here just sits there it's adjustable forward and back i've got a screw here that fits into the slot let me see if i can pull this up with one hand very difficult uh, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, so here we are. That's the saw. That's the uh, armature. And that is the screw that I added to the bottom. Comes right off. No sweat. No sweat. So if you really had to, you can... If you really had to, you can use it like that. I don't really care to take the table off, so I won't. But again, the table is not adjustable. There is the frame. Okay, we'll see how easy it is to put this saw back on. Okay, well that was two hands, and you couldn't see what I was doing, but it's it's easiest pie to put it back on. So that's it. Thanks.